Right, let's go back to the China relationship. You know, you heard me talk about it at the top of the show. Very concerning today, the Victorian Premier basically backing away from much criticism in relation to China. We saw a bit of a move today too from the opposition, Labor opposition, Anthony Albanese and others in Canberra. The Prime Minister, he is entering new territory, trying to attempt a diplomatic reset between the two nations. He went on to Chinese social media as well today. I'm joined now by the Australian's editor-at-large, Paul Kelly, in Sydney. Paul, you've written extensively about this topic today. You've described China as a profoundly dysfunctional entity riddled with contradictions. You're right, of course, but for the PM, he's got to be both principled and pragmatic. So where does he go now? Well, Peter, it's an incredibly difficult challenge. I think it's an unprecedented challenge, frankly. So China is attempting to teach us a lesson. It's engaged in major retaliation against us. It's got something to prove. It wants to ensure that China dictates the terms of this relationship, not Canberra. I guess one of the really difficult tasks here is we don't know exactly what Beijing's end game is, precisely what they're trying to achieve. But as far as Scott Morrison mm -hmm. is concerned, he's got two objectives. The first, of course, is that he can't surrender on basic principle. He can't surrender on basic values. He's not going to uh, retreat on some of the fundamental policies that um, the mm -hmm. government and the previous government have announced. But he's got to try and put a flaw under this deteriorating relationship because the potential to do damage to the Australian economy is simply enormous. I mean, if we think what's happened so far is bad, we've got to realise it could get a lot worse. And this will affect jobs, it will affect industries, it will affect regions. So it's, it's an extremely difficult challenge when it comes to uh, the task of the Prime Minister. But we've got to try and, I think, begin this by taking the temperature out of the relationship and we can't keep playing to domestic politics. We've got to recognise here that what we've got to try and do is stabilise this crisis with China, settle it down and eventually wind it back. I accept that, but I don't think defending our uniform amounts to playing to domestic politics. I think the Prime Minister had nowhere to go on that. And I think perhaps if he had a more... Or, uh, visible or a more vocal foreign minister, someone with a standing of, say, an Alexander Downer in the Howard years, you perhaps could have sent out your foreign minister. But I don't think uh, Maurice Payne cuts it on these sorts of issues, certainly not with the domestic public here in Australia, but I think this is about the uniform more than, more than uh, local politics. What are the motivations, do you think, uh, for China to have taken this... Uh, this stand as they have progressively throughout the year, predominantly on trade matters, but it's a lot more than that. Some have suggested it's retaliation for the move that we made early on to demand a global inquiry into the origins of the pandemic. But is it more than that? What's your view? Well, <laughs> I've got to uh, begin the answer by saying we don't know. And I think there are very few people, if anyone in Australia, who really knows the answer to that question. But... I think it's much deeper. I think what's happened is that we've taken a series of decisions which in their essence are justified, but they do strike at China's global interests. Now, those decisions concern, first of all, Huawei. We decided that it was unsafe on national security grounds to have Huawei in our 5G network. And that was based mm -hmm. on very detailed consideration. But this was a big step. We were the first country in the world to do this. And this affected China's global position and global interests. The same applied then to the foreign investment laws. I'm, I'm sorry, I mean the foreign interference laws. Um, mm -hmm. again, mm -hmm. again, this was a very big and important stand against China, which affected them. And then, of course, we had the issue concerning the virus inquiry earlier this year. So I think it's been a collection of issues and China, China has taken some sort of decision about Australia that they're going to teach Australia a lesson. We don't know how long this will go for, what sort of damage will be done. But it could be significant and I don't think there's going to be any easy turnaround here. I don't think there'll be any quick resetting of the relationship and it may well be we're looking at quite a period of time before we can settle this down and stabilise it.
All right, I want to move on to the ABC again. Going back to that uh, Four Corners program, we heard from the Minister, Communications Minister, Federal Minister Paul Fletcher yesterday. He's written to the ABC chairman expressing concern and asking questions about where it sits in relation to the charter obligations of the broadcaster. But more chatter today that there are serious allegations in relation to uh, the use of either directly contracted or through a third party that a private investigator was used as part of the story to follow ministers or indeed one minister in particular, Christian Porter. The ABC is denying these reports, but as I said, uh, the allegation also goes to a third party used as a go-between. Now, if this is true, Paul, have you ever heard of this happening before? Well, let's take um, the letter first. Uh, this is an extraordinary letter. Uh, we've got the communications minister writing this letter uh, to the ABC, making it public, posing a whole series of questions about the Four Corners program. Now, I wrote at the time that there was profound concern in the senior ranks of the Morrison government about this program, and this is verified by the letter, which asks the ABC to address a whole series of issues about this program, which go to the question of public interest, which go to the question of accuracy, which go to the question of the ABC discharging its responsibilities in terms of impartiality under the Act. So the letter itself is quite extraordinary. Mm. Then we've got the uh, report we had in The Australian today um, um, uh, that th there may have been um, a private investigator, uh, some sort of surveillance uh, commissioned by someone involved in the program. Now, the ABC has denied that or they've issued a form of denial, but it's very clear, it's very clear from what the government is saying privately about this that the government has uh, suspicions uh, on this issue. Now, this will clearly be pursued and we'll have to get to the bottom of it, but Mm -hmm. We'll have to see exactly what happened, but there's no doubt, there's no doubt that I think the Morrison government is determined to pursue the matter and find out exactly what happened. The stakes involved for the ABC could be pretty significant here. Yeah, we'll see what comes of it all now that it's uh, not just the chairman, but it's the managing director. Paul Kelly, thank you for your time. Thanks, Peter.